Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our first episode of Pegasus. I am Dr. Brittany Moore Henderson, Community Outreach Veterinarian at Mississippi State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Each month, we will share information about events within the college, within the profession, and within the careers of our alumni, faculty, staff, and students, while also providing you with some important tips on how to care for your four-legged companions, both large and small. And to start our inaugural show, I have with me no other than the Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine, Dean Hoblett. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Hoblett. Thanks for having me. And to begin today's show, the past couple of weeks have been pretty busy, but also exciting for the CBM because we just finished interviewing and selecting students for our incoming veterinary class, class of 2021. We had a numerous amount of applications from students all over the country as well as internationally. So my question for you is, what distinctive characteristics does our College of Veterinary Medicine have that attract so many highly qualified applicants? Well, there are, there are 30 colleges of veterinary medicine in the United States right now, and I tell students they can get a veterinary degree at any of those colleges, but they ought to look to where a college would be that would fit what their needs and abilities and wants are. Our college is distinctive in several aspects. One is we're one of three colleges that actually provides two years of clinical education. So they have two years of preclinics, and then the, at the end of their second year, they go right into clinical rotations. Also, we do not track. Some colleges of veterinary medicine require students to pick very early in their academic career what species they want to work on. We don't do that. Our faculty believe that the students should decide that after they've been in the curriculum a while. So those are a couple of things that make our college distinctive. Another really interesting thing is, of the students that we take, about uh, 20 states will be represented in, the, in an incoming class. So students will come here and get to know students from all across the country, and as you said, uh, even some foreign countries. Okay, I have to say that our Innovalo uh, curriculum um, produces well-prepared veterinarians that are not only uh, making a difference within um, their uh, profession, but also within the communities in which they serve. Um, our students here at the CVM have the opportunity to um, do various forms of community outreach, whether it's from uh, our mobile veterinary clinic, uh, which uh, provides veterinary service to clinics, uh, shelters throughout Mississippi, or through our annual open house, which is actually coming up very soon, uh, which the CVM opens their doors to um, prospective students or just anyone who wants to see our facilities or uh, learn more about the College of Veterinary Medicine. In what ways are our students involved in open house? Well, students pretty much direct the whole open house experience. I believe this year it's March 31st and April 1st, and so students are planning that, and you're, you're involved in leading that <laughs> effort, actually. And they'll, they'll give tours, they have exhibits, they have demonstrations, and pretty much uh, students from all over Mississippi and even surrounding states and their families. Saturday's typically the family day. Friday families can come, but that's typically students and school buses, and we'll, we'll usually get about 3,000 people that, in those two days. So join us Friday, March the 31st, and Saturday, April the 1st, for our 32nd annual open house from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. each day. Finding Bully is this year's open house theme and is sure to provide lots of fun and educational activities for the kids and adults alike. This event is free and open to the public, so we hope to see you there. Thank you again for joining us today, Dean Hoblett. Thank you. And we'll take a break and we'll be back in just a moment with more. In today's information age, speed and technology drive innovation and economic advantage. At Mississippi State University, our Cray supercomputer is among the fastest academic systems in the world. How fast? Wrap your mind around 593 trillion calculations per second. What can we do with a system like this? What can't we do? When NASA had safety concerns with John Glenn's shuttle mission, they turned to us. When the Navy needed a better submarine, we helped design it. We built a better, safer engine cradle for the Corvette, assisted Homeland Security with cyber strategies, and predicted severe weather patterns for NOAA. We're changing the game for supercomputing while helping protect and shape tomorrow. 
opening up a whole new world of possibilities. Flight. It's driven mankind's dreams for centuries. The ability to soar above the Earth, to travel to faraway places, to connect distant points. Manned flights to the moon and space were once the stars for which we reached. Now, unmanned aircraft are the future. At Mississippi State University, our teams are developing unmatched unmanned aircraft systems for an array of critical applications. We're so good at it, the Federal Aviation Administration named MSU a center of excellence in the field, asking us to lead the team that's creating the operating regulations for unmanned aircraft systems worldwide. So essentially, we're writing the flight plan for an industry that is the future. Our work means better information, more opportunity, and limitless horizons for you. The sky really is the only limit. Welcome back, everyone. I am now joined by Dr. Mark Sykes, Assistant Clinical Professor of Emergency Medicine here at the College of Veterinary Medicine. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Sykes. Thank you for having me. Today, we're going to discuss some hidden dangers in our homes that can be harmful to our pets so that we can ensure that our homes are safe for our beloved four-legged companions. So Dr. Sykes, why can our homes, which are normally considered to be safe places, um, sometimes be harmful to our pets? It's a great question. So our homes are potentially dangerous because they contain things that unknowingly can be poisonous or toxic to our pets. And the reason for this is twofold. The first is a lot of things that actually aren't harmful to us as humans can be harmful to our pets and create problems. And we're gonna talk about some of those today. The second is that animals are designed a little bit differently than us as humans. Animals inherently are designed to explore their environments, but unlike us, they don't use their hands. Instead, they explore their environments with their mouths. What that means usually is that they can be exposed orally to a lot of different things that can be harmful to their body. I have to say that's very true. But what are some common areas in our homes that can be uh, contain these dangerous products? The first and probably the most dangerous area will surprise a lot of people, it's the kitchen. The kitchen contains a lot of things that we eat on a regular basis, but again, there's a lot of foods that people unknowingly um, uh, can hurt their pets. You know, for example, grapes and raisins, although they're yummy to us and pretty healthy, they can cause renal failure in dogs and cats. Chocolate, which is a great sweet treat, the caffeine in it is too much for pets and it can affect their heart and it can cause seizures. Finally, something as simple as gum with artificial sweetener in it, it can cause low blood sugar as well as hurt their liver. So it's always best to check with your vet about what treats might be good to feed your dogs and cats. A second area that can be dangerous is any place we tend to keep our human medications. Each year, unfortunately, pets are exposed either unknowingly or intentionally to drugs that can potentially hurt them. And to date, I've yet to see anybody make a tamper-resistant bottle that a dog or cat can't gain access to. Even though they may be in the container, dogs are very good at ripping those open and finding what's inside. So it's always best to keep any sort of drug or vitamin up in a safe cabinet where dogs and cats can't gain access to them. The third and final area is the garage, and this one is probably pretty intuitive to most people. It's where we keep our chemicals um, and other substances that we usually think of as being poisonous. One of the biggest examples is antifreeze. Antifreeze contains a chemical in it called ethylene glycol that again can hurt the kidneys and cause renal failure. Um, but we see other things like rat poisons and insecticides, which help us deal with pests. If our animals gain access to these, they can hurt our pets as well. So this is just a brief overview of some of the areas that we see problems when people present their pets for poisonings. Okay, that's quite a bit of poisons in which our animals can get into. Um, what would you say if a, one of our viewers gets, um, animals get exposed to a toxin, what should they do? Yep, so probably the easiest thing and the best thing to do is immediately call your local veterinarian. As veterinarians, part of our training is learning to deal with a lot of the general toxins and poisons that are out there. Now, unfortunately, there are way too many for even us to keep up with, and that's why we have board certified toxicologists. And probably two of the best resources out there for people are either the Pet Poison Helpline 
or the ASPCA um, animal poison control. Both these are animal specific poison control hotlines that have just a wealth of knowledge and they can direct people. And even though there is a small fee associated with calling these hotlines, if an owner establishes care with them, we as the veterinarian can then use that and call them an unlimited amount of times to make certain that their pet gets the best care possible. Okay, and lastly, uh, Dr. Sykes, if um, one of our um, clients, they want to look for more information uh, about what toxins can be harmful to their pets, where can they find this information again? So similarly, um, the Pet Poison Helpline as well as the APCA run wonderful websites and on the websites are a slew of client information sheets articles and a lot of great pictures to help you identify what can be dangerous in your home. They both have great websites and you can find them easily um, by Googling their names or going directly to their web pages. And one more question, Dr. Sykes. Um, what uh, should our, um, if there, is there anything in which people should not do uh, when their pet is exposed to a toxin? Absolutely, so we do see some very innocent mistakes made that can sometimes be very detrimental. Probably the single most important thing is if you feel your pet has been exposed to a toxin, poison, or a drug, do not delay therapy, do not watch and wait. Unfortunately, for a lot of the poisons out there, we have a very, very narrow amount of time in which we can successfully treat them. And unfortunately, there are not that many antidotes. So the best thing we can possibly do is try to decontaminate a pet before the toxic syndrome occurs. Once the clinical signs occur, unfortunately, sometimes it's too late or therapy is a lot more prolonged or a lot more dangerous. The second thing to kind of avoid is to try to look stuff up on the internet and do it yourself. Um, even though there is good information on the internet, there are situations where we may use one therapy for one pet, but using it with a different toxin or poison could be very, very dangerous. So it is always best to, again, consult your local veterinarian. Thank you so much for those important tips, Dr. Sykes. You're welcome. And that concludes our inaugural episode. If you have more information, any questions or comments about today's show, please email me at brittany.henderson at msstate.edu.